surrounding areas. Get ready, Atlanta, and surrounding areas. King Flex Entertainment proudly presents Mid Slot in concert. Coming to the Center Stage Theater in Atlanta, Saturday, 22nd, 18, 7.30 p.m. Whenever I'm with you. Mid Slot is bringing the funk party to Atlanta. Performing songs from their critically acclaimed album, Egyptian Musk. Looking at the Also performing special guest, the APX. Atlanta, don't miss the fun party. Concert event of the year. Get your tickets to see Mink Slide live in concert with special guest, the APX, at Ticketmaster.com. For more information, go to MinkSlide.com. Yo, yo, what's up? How's everybody doing? I'm almost 20 minutes late. I'm here. You know, I had a I had a little gout flare up, but you know, I had to had to make it do what it do. But I'm here. I'm here. And as you see, we just ran the commercial for the Mink Slide concert that's happening in Atlanta. Everybody needs to come on down to the Mink Slide concert in Atlanta. It's the first time turn tuning in. That's what's up. But um Man, y'all need to come through to the Mink Slide concert in Atlanta, December 22nd. Get your tickets below. Go to MinkSlide.com. If you're in South Carolina, come on down. Atlanta, come on down. What's up, Ola? Everybody say what's up to Ola. You're in Milwaukee. Fly down. Chicago, fly down. If you're in D.C., fly down. If you're in Florida, drive up. If you're in Alabama, drive over. But um, definitely come to the Mink Slide concert in Atlanta. We're going to turn it out. It's going to be a fly show, me and the APX and the rest of my group. What's up, Black Sunshine? How are you, dear? I love that name, Black Sunshine. I like that. That's a cool ass name. That sounds like the name of a group, Black Sunshine. That's a tight fucking name right there. You dig? So, yeah, go to MinkSlide.com. I know everybody in Atlanta need to have their tickets by now. You dig? You said Dr. Cobble was on the Black Channel. Shout out to um, um, Jason Black and Brother Cobble. Cobble is always bringing the heat. I got to hear it. I know he was probably spitting some hot fire as usual. I know my man. Um, um, when is the Black Authorities movie coming out? Race War. When is that coming out? When is Race War coming out? You and your boyfriend are making arrangements, Erica. That's what's up. Y'all come on down to Atlanta. Y'all, that's what's up. <clears throat> Excuse me. But when is Race War coming out? October 13th in LA? That's Saturday. No, 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 no. No, it's not. Wait, wait, wait. I think it, that's Saturday, right? Next week? Okay. I'm going to try to see if I can go up there. Yeah, I'm going to try to see if I can go up there. I know we're going to that comedy show Friday. But yeah, October 13th. October 20th in L.A.? Somebody saying October 13th, somebody saying the 20th. Which one is it? I hate when people be having multiple info. So it's October 20th. October 13th in New York City. Okay. I'll look into it. I'll look into it. But you guys check out Race War by um, by Jason Black. Check that out. And if, you know, Brother Kaba is in it, you know it's always going to be hot fire. You dig? <coughs> Excuse me. What's up, Ramon? Shout out to Rosebud. Rosebud just be talking. Rosebud just be talking. Um, in my, I already went to Cincinnati. I already went to Cincinnati. I already went to Cincinnati. But, um, shout out to Miami. Man, I had a gout flare up. 
And so this is the thing. I'm, I'm doing the vegan thing again. Me and Peanut. Peanut be fucking around. See, I be doing this shit doing it. Peanut be doing it for like a week, and then Peanut be sneaking some goddamn shrimp and, you know, eating the kids' food. So I've been doing the vegan thing for like like a week now. I've been doing it for a week now. Because um, there's a sister in the Hidden Colors 5, Queen of Four. She's We like on a little thing, that uh, something that she has. It's like some powders and herbs that we take that she sent. And it's supposed to be like a 30-day type of thing. So I'm going to do it as long as possible. But you're not supposed to be eating meat. It's like really you're cleansing your system up of the meat. And one of the reasons why I wanted to do it is because of the damn gout. Y'all know I'll be having the gout flare-ups. And I've been, I haven't been eating meat for a week. And I got a real severe gout flare-up. So I'm trying to figure out what the hell is it that's making my joint um, flare up like that. So a lot of people are saying black seed oil. I think I'm going to have to get some of that. Anybody had experience with black seed oil? I've been hearing a lot of good things about the black seed oil. We're hearing a lot of good things about the black seed oil. Yeah. Yeah, that gout ain't no joke. I, I, somebody sent me a link of the actor Sinbad, actor comedian Sinbad. He had a gout flare-up not too long ago. He was talking about it. He was about to do something on the weekend, and that gout hit him. And, um, you know, that just took him out the game. Cherry juice. You know, people are saying a lot of stuff. I'm going to have to hit that cherry juice, and I've been hitting the prescribed medicine and all that. How would I get gout when I don't get alcohol? It's me and my mom and dad has gout. So it's really hereditary. My mom and dad has it. And for those who don't know, gout is like uric acid in your system and it builds up crystals and the crystals will land in joints in your body, usually in your feet, in your knees, sometimes in your arm. I haven't eaten bread. I haven't eaten, dude, I haven't eaten bread this week. I haven't eaten meat this week. A lot of stuff I haven't eaten. But, you know, it's a hereditary thing. We, we got that, um, those uric acids in the system. Yeah, that uric acid. I love Simba. Simba, he, he does talk some real shit. I'm going to get that. You know, I'm going to order some of that black seed oil because a lot of people are talking about the black seed oil. So, you know, I had to, I was in, um, had to go to the urgent care to get one of them shots, one of them, like, cortisone shots to kind of um, bring the pain down. You dig? Key lime and spring water. Yeah. So, you know, I'm holding on. You know, I, every, every now and then I get uh, fried fish hallucinations. You know, every now and then, you know, I start hallucinating about Popeye's chicken and shit. You know, but I fight it. You dig? I fight it. And, um, when I left the doctor today, you know, to get another prescription, I went uh, to Chipotle. I got like a vegan burrito. And, you know, some stuff like that will tide you over. They have that sofrito. Um, I don't know what the hell that is, but it's supposed to be vegan. What is sofrito? Is that like, is that soy? Because I, I don't want to eat too much soy. But Chipotle has something. It's like a vegan thing, sofrito, or sofrita. And, um... That's supposed to be like a vegan, a vegetarian meat substitute. Sarsaparilla for gal. You think you got gal on the knee? Sofrita is soy. Okay. That's dangerous. Yeah, I, I want to kind of stay away from that. And that's the thing. Turmeric, try a turmeric capsule. Sofrito is onion, celery, and carrots. The water fast. Yeah, so yeah. So I don't want to, I don't want to mess with that, um, anything soy too much. What's up, POV Hilarious D? Black seed oil is the truth. Gal flare up. 
This is because of detox. Your body flushing out toxins during a detox. Okay, that's... Yeah, because, you know, nor, I, I noticed that POV, and that's a very good point. A lot of times when I do, like, a juice fast or when I do um, a, a meat fast, I'm getting off meat, I start getting a cra I get crazy-ass gout flare-ups. So that must be the toxins being flushed out of the body and, you know, still getting caught up. Because I haven't had a gout flare-up like this in a long time. This shit is hurting. I'm walking around limping like a fucking runaway slave in this bitch. So, you know, it's, it's probably the, all the detox and the toxins getting out of my body. You dig? Turmeric. Oh. Y'all email me and let me know what kind, what's the best kind of turmeric to get. Black Seed. Oh, come on. I'm going to order all that stuff on Amazon tonight, by the way. I was, uh, like I said, I went to um, Chipotle. Because those burritos will fill you up. Because a lot of times when you're trying to do the vegan thing, you know, a lot of shit you don't get filled up. And I haven't, I try to stay away from snacking on a whole bunch of shit. Because last time I did the vegan thing, I was, um, I wasn't messing with no meat, but I was snacking my ass off everything. I'm like, well, shit, this cookie is a goddamn vegetable. Shit, that piece of cake is vegetable. Shit. Flour comes from the earth. I'm just trying to justify eating all the non meat garbage. <clears throat> I'm like, well, shit, hot Cheetos is a vegetable, they look like carrots. So I'm, I'm eating a gang of junk, mind fucking myself because I ain't eating meat. <laughs> and I'm eating just as worse, so I ain't doing that this time. That I'm not doing. You dig? Sour sop. I, I want to know where I had sour sop in Haiti. Shout out to Haiti, my brothers and sisters in Haiti. They've been hit with an earthquake, and I get on that in a minute. Remind me to get on Haiti. The brothers and sisters out there in the earthquake in a minute. I do want to touch on that. But, um, yeah, but I went to Chipotle after I left the doctor's office today to get one of those vegan burritos and that, that time, yo. But you know what's funny? I was in, I was in, um, when I was in Chipotle, there was an old elderly sister. I think she was trying to choose. I think an elderly sister tried to shoot her shot at my ass. So I'm in Chipotle, and there's this older sister standing in front of me. She was waiting on her order. She was looking at me. She, you know, nice-looking older lady. You did. Had on her little older lady hat, a real nice hat. Looked like she was in very good shape. She was, she kind of shot, I'm thinking she was shooting her shot. And it kind of made me a little uncomfortable. So we're, we're, I'm getting my, I'm talking to the people that are making my food, and she was like, hey, anybody tell you you look like Tyler Perry? I'm like, yes, yeah, I hear that a lot, man. I hear that a lot. Uh, let me get some more um, onions on that. I'm still trying to, you know, do my thing. I said, yeah, because <laughs> people say that all the time. I'm like, okay. Then, you know, it was kind of innocent. <clears throat> She's like, yeah, you know, you look like Tyler Perry, but, you know, I, I say, well, people tell me that all the time. Sometimes people get me mixed up with Tyler Perry. I understand that. Uh, let me get some more um, guacamole on that. But yeah, but I know the difference. <laughs> okay, I'm getting stuck. I don't know what to, I don't know what to say. <laughs> okay, all right. Let me get some sour cream on that. I'm, I don't know what the fuck to say. It's like, uh, uh, yeah, I've been around a long time. I'm 78 years old. You know, a lot of older people like telling you how old they are. And she didn't, she looked good for her age. And I said, wow, you look very good for your age. You look like, you know, your, your skin is real smooth. Your face is real smooth. She's like, nah. I swear to God, this woman pulled her shirt down and showed her cleavage. I, if I'm lying, I'm fucking flying. She showed her cleavage. She's like, right here, this is how you can tell how old somebody is. I'm like, can I get some more um, safrita and some ground pepper on this? I don't know what the fuck to say. I'm like, okay. All right. I'm like, did Nana just show me her goddamn cleavage? In Chipotle? 
if I'm flying, I'm flying, nigga. If I'm lying, strike me down. Now, this woman showed me her cleavage. She's 78 years old. And I'm stuck. I don't know what to say. I'm left, I left out this one. I got my food. Praise the Lord, ma'am. You have a good day. I don't know what the fuck to say. So I left. I lift out my gout fucking. I said, shit. <laughs> Damn. I've never had an elderly sister really shoot a shot like that. I'm like, wow. Okay. Man. Oh, nigga, I was stuck. Nigga, I was blushing. I turned into a white man. <laughs> I was blushing like a white man. I'm like, eh, my fucking God, dude. Can I get some mayonnaise on the burrito? I'm a white man. <laughs> I had, a, I ordered a mayonnaise burrito. I, that's how white I turned. Shit. <laughs> oh, my God. Well, she... She was a fly lady for her age. For 80, for 78, she was flying them up. Like she was like, well shit, I can still get these niggas. She had body, the whole thing. So, so somebody must be hollering at her ass to make her that comfortable with getting that niggas. You know? Yeah, she pulled the lady Eloise on my ass. Right. She said some shit like, well, you know, I'm a I'm a I'm a millionaire. I'm a multi-millionaire. I own I own all the rights to Afro Sheen from back in the day. I own that now. <laughs> I want to come talk to you. Oh, shit. If my money got low, I might have to go up to Chipotle and look for her. Shit. The way she was choosing, if she had some paper, if my money ever get low, and if y'all see me out with somebody elderly, don't fucking judge me. You know? Me and Peanut, we'll work out some. I'll explain to her. I'll go out, but I won't hit it. <laughs> Man, but she's a good-looking sister for 78. She's 78 years old. She did have body, and I ain't saying that I'm... When she showed the cleavage, I'm like, what? What, what, is she, what is she doing? I'm thinking that... I'm like, did she just bust the cleavage out? I'm like, Damn. She was trying to show me, like, look, I ain't one of these bitches who get Botox. She like, my whole body is fine, nigga. That's what she was showing me. Like, look, all oh, this is fine. This ain't no Botox or no um, shots. And all oh, this, is, this is fine. Good living if you want to get up on it. <laughs> Lord. Man, man, man. And that old lady looked like she probably fucked the shit out of a young nigga. That old lady take off that bra, titties be smelling like mothballs, and be riding all types of dick. You better not sleep on them old ladies. He's one of them old ladies that be taking 10 mile hikes in the morning. He's one of them and drinking rainwater. So that lady probably got some tricks up her damn sleeve. I don't want to know. Y'all let me know. <laughs> Man. <laughs> oh, this is my grandma, my, my mom. I love this is my mom checking on my hold on. Yeah. Sorry about this guys. I hate when people be they know I'm doing my show right now. I mean they texting me. Now let me let me say this now. If I if the show cuts off, I'm doing things in increments. Because of the way that um, that um, YouTube does, so I'm, I'm breaking my shows up. So I pause. I'll stop the show for like three seconds, but don't go nowhere. Just refresh your page. All right. I'll stop the show for like three seconds, then refresh your page. Then I'll go into different topics. All right. And I'm about to do that right now. So don't go nowhere. I'm gonna stop for three seconds. Don't go nowhere. Refresh your page in three seconds. All right. All right, here we go. I think we're good to go. All right. I think we're good to go. Let me see if this is working. 
let me see if I when I did that it worked. But sometimes it may or may not work. So I'm gonna break the shows up. Hold on one second. Y'all bear with me. A lot of folks have been circulating. They got a video when I was on BET back in the day. I was on a show called Old Drama. So a lot of people, they've been circulating that video. I got to put out, because I got that video too. I got it on my videotape somewhere in the house. I got to um, put out a lot of my old videos where I was doing talk shows back in the day. And did, it, did it do it? Okay, I, I don't think it worked when I just tried to do that. I think I have to pause for a long time. But yeah, I don't think it, it, it did it. So I might just, I just have to break the shows up a little later. I'll break them up a little later. All right. Yeah, I was on old drama spitting that hot fire. I was on there with my Mackish gear spitting hot fire, and the audience was on it. See, back in those days, um, a lot of times they would get folks on shows and then try to low-key sneak diss and then turn the audience against them. Especially dudes who were spitting any kind of game or any type of players or whatever, they would try to bring them on those shows and you know they would kind of be antagonistic to them to a certain degree. A lot of those shows would try to do that really in the early 2000s. That was their thing. Because understand, that was that... Um, Men are from Mars, women are from Venus, where, you know, they had all those old simp-ass, ass-kissing books out. You dig? And I'm, I'm going to show y'all videos of all these shows I would go on, where I would have the audience eating out the palm of my damn hand. The audience was with it. The audience was cooperating. You dig? Oh, yeah, they were trying to do little sneak disses. I didn't even have to see. That's how you sidestep the bullshit and you stay on point. You stay on track. Not only were they trying to sneak this, they were trying to, they had people planted in the audience trying to do little sneak disses. They would plant people in the audience and try to have them to sneak this. So I would sidetrack all that and keep it real Mackish. Hold on one second. Sorry about that, guys. Some stuff from Queen of Four. Some Queen of Four stuff. So I'm gonna show y'all some. Um, do I hate Taylor Swift? What the hell are you talking about, bro? You like my shirt? Thank you, man. Y'all get your Make Slide shirts at MakeSlide.com. But I'm um, also when I was on Jenny Jones, they tried that on Jenny Jones. I had the audience all on my side. They didn't like that. They didn't like that. I kept flipping it on their ass, and I had the audience on my side. And I remember being up at BET and behind the scenes, but backstage, it was so janky. Oh, it was run so fucking janky and bootleg backstage. <laughs> you did? Yes, I was on Jenny Jones. I gotta I gotta get that 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 tape for you. Um let me talk about. Haiti, there was an earthquake in Haiti. Shout out to my brother. Yeah, yeah, Jenny Jones. Let me, let me get back on that. Jenny Jones, they would do these ambush shows. They would tell you you're going to be on the show for one thing and then get you on there and ambush you. That was her thing. They tried to do it to me, but I had the... My, my books were selling in Chicago. The publisher was in Chicago, so everybody was on my side. So they tried to do that little ambush shit with me, and this shit didn't work. And remember, Jenny Jones did that, and the dude killed somebody. She brought a dude on the show talking about he has a, there was a secret crush, and then it was his neighbor. It was a, the, a gay dude who had a crush on him, and, and, the, and the dude was embarrassed, so he ended up killing the dude. So Jenny Jones, it was a big old court case and the whole shebang. It was crazy. You dig? So that was their M.O., pulling that type of shit. Yeah, gay dude got killed. And speaking of that, you know, a lot of the um, LGBT, especially these Negroes, I'll get on that in a minute. Let me, let me get on them in a 
moment. Let me pace myself because there's a lot of stuff, a lot of stuff I want to talk about. A lot of stuff we're going to talk about tonight. I got to pace myself. The first things first. I'll get on that LBGT thing in a minute. Um, Haiti. Like I said, there was an earthquake in Haiti, in the northern tip of Haiti. Do I have any Haitian brothers and sisters in here? Do I have any Haitian brothers and sisters in here? Let me talk to you guys. From what I understand, because I've been back and forth to Haiti several times. I love Haiti. love the Haitians. I feel like I'm an honorary Haitian. I love the underdogs. The area where my Zoes talk to me, my Haitian, my Zoes, the area where the earthquake hits, that's the northern tip of Haiti. That's right over there where the citadel is, right? From what I understand. Let me, let me just be clear on the geography of it. Where that earthquake hit is right over there by the citadel. Am I correct in that? Where are my people? Subsystem. Okay. Haiti's in the house. What city is it close? Is it Cap Haitian Port de Pai? It wasn't in Port-au-Prince. No, it's not in Port-au-Prince. No, Port-au-Prince, is that's in the southern part. The northern part. Well, the earthquake, they said it killed about 12 people. But I want to talk to my people who are from there. I want to just be sure and clear on the geographic area. And when I see it on the map, that looks like up there by the citadel. Is near Nikoi, Haiti. Is near Nikoi. Near Cap Haitian. So look, my, my Haitian people, talk to me. The ep, how far is the epicenter of that earthquake from the Citadel area? About how far is that um the 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 epicenter of the earthquake? Because I find it very interesting that that earthquake hit in that particular area. You're a descendant of him. Hilarious. About four hours, okay. <clears throat> because I'm, I'm gonna be real. I feel funny style about this earthquake. I, there's a lot of them that I feel funny style, but I'm putting on the tinfoil hat I, feel, I find it interesting, number one, this smells like harp. It smells like one of those man-made earthquakes. It just does. It just does. It just smells like one of the man-made earthquakes, man. And they do have the technology. I'm not, I'm not fully with the tinfoil hat. I mean, they have the technology to cause earthquakes. They do. And the white supremacists, they use these things as weapons. They weaponize this stuff. So they're always weaponizing the economy, using any type of military force, or using agricultural warfare, environmental warfare. They're always doing something to Haiti. So when you see something else happening to Haiti, I'm like, okay, what are they doing, all right? You understand? So I'm, I'm going to question all of it. I'm not just going to look at it like one hell of a coincidence that just keeps on hitting Haiti. And then they're telling us, well, it's because they worship the devil is why they keep getting hit. That's bullshit. These, these earthquakes seem like they're man-made. There was an earthquake that hit the southern part of Haiti. Now there's one that hit the northern part of Haiti right around there by the citadel. You know, looked like they were using that as a way to try to destroy the citadel. And that's probably why the citadel is positioned where it is, in a safe place, environmentally safe place, that won't be as susceptible susceptible to any kind of natural natural disasters. You did? But always, it's always hidden Haiti. But not the Dominican Republic. You don't see it hitting the Dominican Republic like that. 
the Dominican Republic is on the same island. The Dominican Republic is on the same island, but it's always these things are hitting Haiti. So you got to question that. And then what happens is when the, the, these earthquakes hit, then all of a sudden they scoop up in there. And then all of a sudden, children missing, children are missing, organs are missing, body parts are missing. You dig? But all the earthquakes just keep skipping over the Dominican Republic that's on the same island, dude. Come on, that's real funny style to me. So we, we got to see what's going on out here. Don't trust anything if a white supremacist could, would have anything to do with it. And the fact that this one hit up there in the north, over there, not too, too far from the Citadel. Understand, a lot, the Citadel is something that represents black power. And we talked about that in 1804. Y'all need to really watch 1804. The Citadel represents something. It represents black power. The Citadel, that's a huge fort that the Haitians built on a mountain up in Haiti after they kicked out all the white supremacists. They kicked out all the white supremacists and they built the biggest fort in the Western Hemisphere. The Citadel is the biggest fort in the Western Hemisphere. A bunch of black Haitians built it. That's why y'all never hear about it. Everybody here, you should go on a vacation or field trip to Haiti just to see the citadel, just to see the magnificence of this structure. Y'all should go see it. Look at the movie 1804 and just do a tour. Do an 1804 tour. Go there. Go check out the Bois Cayman area where they had the ceremony. Just go to Haiti, man. You, I promise you will love it. Well, the citadel is really, it's like a tourist attraction. It's still there. It's, it's a big monument that will... It ain't going nowhere unless somebody destroy it, and hopefully they don't. You do? But it's amazing to see this is what former enslaved African people in Haiti built. See, they got us thinking that we ain't we can't do anything without white mommy and white daddy. Those Africans kicked them white supremacists out and built that monumental structure that is of architectural magnificence. Y'all got to see, these are people out of slavery who built this shit. These people were enslaved and directly, they got themselves free and built this big ass monument out here. You did And also San Suchi is right down the street from the Citadel. Another palace. Now that one, you'll see the ruins of it. Another beautiful um, architectural structure. You dig? That's why you never hear about that. Whenever they talk about forts, large castles and forts in the Western Hemisphere, they never talk about that. And that's the biggest one. That was on 1804. Yes, we did talk about that. We got an aerial shot of it. We, Man, I went through hell getting that shot. We went through hell getting that shot. We had to, because we had a drone camera and it had all types of government codes blocking it and my camera dude had to hack over the codes. I mean, we were doing international espionage to get this damn shot. No disrespect to the government of Haiti. I just wanted to show the story and tell the truth. And we lost a drone because this motherfucker got real flight happy. We went down to Jack Mill and the dude was flying, showing the beach area and the island. I'm like, hey, man, bring that shit on back in here. Come on, one more shot, dude. Then the fucking drone fell in the damn water. So we, there's a lot of shit that you didn't get to see in 1804 because my goddamn cameraman dropped the, 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 the drone in the ocean. I was pissed as hell. Luckily, I saved... The, the, the footage from the Citadel and all that the day before. That's why whenever you film, download the footage, save it, and put that shit on a backup drive. You understand? That's why you always, the, the day after, save that shit. Because you never know. Man, y'all don't understand how pissed I was. 
boy, y'all don't understand how pissed I was. Because I'm like, we flew over there for those shots. That shit wasn't, that wasn't cheap. <clears throat> Should a young black brother vote? Yeah, vote locally. Vote locally. But again, like I said, my, my Haitian brothers and sisters, man, I hope they stay strong. hope they keep their head up, man. And, you know, keep your eyes open for the white supremacists coming out there to exploit the earthquake. Keep your eyes open for that. Um, but speaking of voting... Um, it, it's important to vote local so that, you know, you can get a power base, uh, uh, um, a political power base locally. And understand how these white supremacists own code. You know, you got Kavanaugh. Kavanaugh made it to the Supreme Court. We knew that was going to happen. And what happened with Kavanaugh, I knew he was going to get in there when he had that woman behind him deliberately throwing up white supremacist hand signals. He had that white supremacist, that woman was throwing up white supremacist hand signals. So he he was letting people know, get on code with putting me in the Supreme Court. Get on code with putting me in the Supreme Court. Basically, he was saying, hey, look, y'all put me in here. Forget about all the scandals. I'm team white supremacy. So overlook that. And it worked. They put him in there. Understand the in the media, the fact that they were so quiet about the woman sitting behind him throwing up those white supremacist hand signals, the fact that they, the media ignored that. I said, okay, he he about to get in. All this old fake outrage about those women, they knew that ain't nobody tripping on him in these sexual abuse allegations. That white dudes don't get those allegations stuck on them. White dudes don't get those, they don't get them shit stuck on them. That's how white supremacy works. You get to sexually abuse anybody you want to. That, that comes with white supremacy. Sexual dominance. Sexual dominance and white supremacy goes hand in hand. When the white supremacists came out of Spain at first, going all around the world, they were sexually dominating and raping people. You know, so that goes hand in hand. And the white women are perfectly cool with that if white supremacy is maintained. Remember, over 50% of the voters, those white women voted for Trump. Also, those white women out there were caping for Kavanaugh. They were caping for him. See, they ran all that bullshit game about Cosby. It ain't about sexual assault. It's about white supremacist domination. Susan Collins. Pe people were acting like Susan Collins disappointed everybody. Susan Collins voted team white supremacy. She she was the vote who voted for him. She, she's team white supremacy. That's the thing. They'll talk a good game, black folks. And I want y'all to understand. These people will talk a good game in your face, but behind closed doors, when, when it comes down to it, they're going to vote team white supremacy. All the logic goes out the window. You're like, damn, this dude's a sexual predator. This dude is this. He's bad on this. He's team white supremacy. You understand? Black folks think that you're going to try to get allies with these people, and they're going to negate white supremacy for you with your dumb ass. All you dumb niggas who was out here yelling about Cosby, oh, he a rapist Negro, especially these blabbity blacks and these roots, bedwenches, and coons. Oh, that damn Bill Cosby's a goddamn rapist. Me too. All right, Bill Cosby's in jail. All you Negroes huffing and puffing about Bill Cosby. How does that help you as a black person? Other than you getting a personal pat on the head and a personal plate of biscuits. I'm talking to all these Negroes woofing about Cosby. All these Negroes hollering about how Cosby should go down. Cosby's a serial rapist. All your woofing and huffing and puffing about Cosby. Okay, he's in jail. White women are about to cash out. That Me Too movement, the Cosby going to jail, all that benefits white women. These are white women who are about to get cashed out. The Gloria Allred, she's about to get cashed out. All these other women 
whose cases have been thrown out of criminal court, they're still fouling civil cases. This one woman who was in the Playboy Mansion talking about Bill Cosby um, sexually raped or assaulted her, assaulted her in the Playboy Mansion on a certain date. She made a mistake and named a certain date and found out Bill Cosby wasn't even in town. So it was thrown out. The, the police just threw that shit out. But a civil court judge allowed her case to go forward. Even though they know that Bill Cosby wasn't even in town, they're still allowing these people to run game and defraud and, and put up these frivolous lawsuits because they're all on code. The white women are getting something out of it. What a unique Chloe going. That's her name. Moist Lamont Hill, Jabed Winch Lemieux. What are you got? Fraud and Easter. What are y'all getting out of all this shitting on Cosby and making a big wolf out of shitting on Cosby? What y'all getting out of it as black people? Except you just trying to show out for white mommy and white daddy so you can get a biscuit flung your way. What are you getting out of it? How does Cosby going to jail work for you? Has Amber Rose said anything on her Instagram about Kavanaugh? Are there any posts that Amber Rose made about Kavanaugh? Was she at the slut walk talking about Kavanaugh? Talking about how Kavanaugh should die? Like she said, how Bill Cosby should die? Did Amber Rose make any post talking about how Kavanaugh should die? You feel me? Now we, we see where, where these people really are. It's all about white ass kissing. Them getting some individual butter biscuits for themselves. That's some off-code coon shit. That's off-code coon shit. You did? And I'm going to get on the Cosby thing in a minute. I'm going to get deeper about Cosby in a minute. But the white women, they were like, we don't give a shit about those, those accusations. We like Kavanaugh because they understand white supremacy. They are team white supremacy. They understand it's important for them to get on code in order to maintain white privileges. They understand that. That's why the white supremacists continue to win. They know how to get on code and Negroes just be doing attention whoring bullshit so they can get individual nigger trinkets. No code at all. Speaking of code, y'all know, y'all remember that lady who climbed the, the, the Statue of Liberty? Patricia something. Isn't she from Uganda? She was up there, some, she was working with one of them, them white groups, um, one of them white immigration groups who gets money or whatever. Patricia something. She's that African immigrant in New York. I'm going to give you her name. Patricia Okumu. Patricia Okumu. I think that's her name. Patricia Okumu. She's from the Congo, right? So, and I go back and listen to the archives. I talked about her. You know, she's up there trying to earn her butter biscuits, climbing the Statue of Liberty for immigrants, trying to, and I, I knew something was funny style with her. I told y'all months ago, the day she did that, I did a broadcast. I'm like, look at this bug dancer trying to get some brownie points, jumping all on the Statue of Liberty, risking her life for basically Hispanics and other liberal white people so she can get some brownie points. I told y'all something was funny style about her. So she made some posts because there were some people, some black groups trying to work with her. And she's talking real greasy about these black groups not wanting to work with them. You're friends with her on Facebook. This is a post she made. I want y'all to... This is a post she made. Let me share it with you while I read it. Let me see, it's kind of blurry. Hold on. 
Look at this post she made. I'm going to read it to you. Okay, my thing is acting funny, but I'll read it to you. Okay. She said, this was last Tuesday, when you climb the Statue of Liberty on the 4th of July to raise consciousness about the callous manner in which our government is treating asylum seekers, literally ripping tender age children from nursing mothers and placing them in cages and building concentration camps, while the black community publicly silences you from public speaking and the rest of the world does not reach out to help you, but you use your story anyway. Then we've lost our humanity. This raggedy bedwench sat up here and took a shot at American black people. This mammy coon. I told y'all she was funny style. She's up here making posts talking about the black community is trying to silence her. We don't even fuck with you like that, lady. So she's dog whistling to the white supremacists. Read this shit and just take a read it. This is on her Facebook page. The black, com while, while the black community right here, ah, uh, fuck it. All right, y'all got it, y'all got it. Lady, fuck you. You, you. You're just trying to show out for some butter biscuits. Ma'am, you're trying to show out. That's why, y'all, look at the show I did about her a couple of months ago. I had a picture of her on the Statue of Liberty. Hold on, let me let me find this, the broadcast. Hold on. Let me show. I told y'all about her way back then. I knew she was funny style. Hold on. Let me, let me show y'all that thing when it happened on the 4th of July. Hold on. Let me show y'all. The thing. There it is, right here. Okay. Hold on. All right. I showed her sitting on the Statue of Liberty. Hold on. All right. See, that's her. I did a broadcast. That's my broadcast I did. That's her on the Statue of Liberty. The police trying to get her down. And there's three butter biscuits in front of her ass. She's sitting there with three butter biscuits. They're trying to lure her ass down with some butter biscuits. I did a broadcast about that. I told y'all she was on the coon train. She took the coon plane all the way from the Congo. Fuck out of here. I told y'all, man, we got to watch some of these people who come over here and try to get brownie points from white mommy and white daddy by throwing us under the bus. They're very good at doing that. They're very good at pulling that, that bullshit. And we got to start checking these folks. We got to start checking these people. You dig? And did y'all see, speaking of these foreigners that we got to check, a lot of these Dominicans, we got to check some of these folks. Y'all see the video of the, um, I think these dudes were Dominican in New York, these Latin dudes. It was a black Uber driver and they were calling the brother names and they were some, they were calling the police on the dude because of, they, they wanted to play a song on the radio, some shit. And it was a gay I want to say Dominican dude. They look Dominican. They might have been Dominican. And they were up here talking about the, the Dominican gay dude was like, yeah, I like to report this guy. He black. Hold on. Let me play some of it here. Hold on. Yes, I'm with your driver right now. And if your calls, if everything is recorded when you come in the vehicle, the only thing I did is when I entered the vehicle, I asked the gentleman if he had music. music. And the gentleman told me no, very, mm -hmm. very, um, very abruptly. So oh, I asked him, do you have music? music? Are you sure? And he got really defensive. Oh, my God. Maybe because I'm not black or anything like that. But the gentleman is very, he stopped on the corner. I had to call the police. I've been a Lyft driver for a very long time. I so, I mean, it goes on. This, this goes on for like 16 minutes. Oh. Sir, I'm not giving you. 
So this gay dude who's a, a Dominican, I think, he's the Dominican. He started, he said that he was a Trump supporter. He's like, yes, I'm a Trump supporter, and this black man is doing this. Let me tell y'all something. All y'all Negroes who go up here to the root and all these places who think that your sexuality is going to get you to trump your blackness, you are sadly mistaken. A lot of black people think by claiming a camaraderie with cats like that, you think that your blackness is going to be overlooked for your sexuality. And these people from Latin countries and people who from the, from the LGBT community, they always put their race before their sexuality. This is why there's so much discrimination and white supremacy within the LGBT community. And a lot of black people are embarrassed to admit that because see, you become the pet Negro who gets to be flaunting around which is white supremacy itself, the fact that they got a pet Negro. See, you're a charity case. See, black folks, we, we love being the charity case of these people. We love being the charitable uh, make-a-wish Negro. You get around these people and they, you'll be the one black friend, so they'll parade you around and basically give you charity, little bullshit nigga trinkets, leftovers, so black folks, we love that type of shit. We think we special. You become the charitable make-a-wish Negro. Which is basically, you're a pet. You're nothing but a pet. So you think you special because you get to be the pet. But these same people would go out here and shit on all other black people. And their excuse is, well, hell, I got a black friend that's, hell, he practically lives with me. How can I be racist and I got that one black friend that I fuck every now and then? So I'm not racist. I fuck my black friend all the time. So how am I racist that I won't let all you other niggas in this club? That I won't let all you other niggas move into this gay community that's with white and Latinos or white Latinos too? You dig? Black people got this thing real bad where we love being the charitable pet Negro around these people. Because you keep letting some of these Dominicans, um, you let them keep talking. You out here marching with them in the parade and you twerking and letting them fuck on you and all that. And then when they go home, they're Team Trump. They put on a Make America Great Again hat. And you think, yeah, fuck that. I'm an intersectionalist. I'm intersectional. They're like, look, my, my nigga friend gets on my nerves. They talk about you behind your back like a dog. In the video, he was also saying black lives don't matter. Yeah, he was saying a whole bunch of racist shit. Your gay Latin friend. You watch these Dominicans and all these people. I ain't talking about all Dominicans, but y'all got some Dominicans coming over from the Dominican Republic. A lot of Dominicans were were upset with me because I was going in on that Miro guy from that Jesus and Miro show and talking about how he's a Dominican. The other day I was talking about how much of a Dominican he is. He's the Dominican dude and they get on these white shows and they got like a white audience and they tell these outdated corny ass jokes. And I had to get on that Jesus dude, not Jesus, not Jesus, but Miro because he was jumping to the defense of Jamela Lemieux. See, all of these peripheral niggas, they look out for each other. When I was going in on Jamila Lemieux and her black man hatred, I want y'all to understand, look at all the people who were defending her. Mark LaMoist Hill. What's that other white-looking hip-hop dude? Jay Smooth. What's his name? That dude, he, he looks like a white man, but he says he's black. He tried to say something slick about me to defend Jamila. And her anti-black man fuckery. What's that nigga's name? Jay something. 
Is it Jay Smooth? Yeah, he's basically a white looking dude who says he's black, but he looks white. And he goes around doing lectures about race. He's one of them. He's like another, like a uh, another Tim Wise. And you know, you gotta watch those guys. Yeah, the big he has a big old ass head. So you watch those guys, and, and also that Jay Smooth dude, he was another one talking greasy about Bill Cosby. Because Jay Smooth has a white mother. You got to understand that. So they're going to side with their white moms. But Jay Smooth, he's one of those hip-hop dudes. Don't be fooled by that. Don't be fooled by that yo, yo, yo hip-hop shit. Understand, when they go behind closed doors, they identify with whiteness because they can pass for white. You dig? That Jay Smooth, all he has to do is put on a hat or let his hair grow or get some hair plugs. He'll look like a, a regular everyday white man. You did? You watch those guys. They'll sit up and talk all that racism is bad. Yeah, racism is bad. And what happens is that we allow these people to become the spokespersons for what racism is. Then they'll start redefining shit. You got to watch those people, man. Because a lot of these people play both sides of the fence, like Neely Fuller says. It's one white guy. He's like, a. I want to say he's the doctor or whatever. He may or may not be. But he talks a lot about vaccines and how it affects black people and how racism affects black people. But then I've seen videos of this dude talking like goddamn Alex Jones. He sounded like the alt-right in some other videos. Obama's this and Obama's that. And the Black Lives Matter is used to undermine. I mean, he sounds like an alt-right dude in some of his videos. We got to watch that. White supremacists will play both sides of the argument. You got to watch these people, these certain people who can almost pass, who can pass, or almost pass for white, who become the mouthpiece for black society. We got to be careful with that. The health ranger, that's his name. I think that's his name. Watch that health ranger, dude. I'm telling you now, watch him. But these guys will talk up a good game and they will flip it. Lacey Green, again, that's another one. But all the, the J-Rocks and all these racially and ambiguous-ass people, you got to watch that. Especially these Dominicans and some of these, um, these white Latins who identify with white supremacy, especially down there in Cuba, the DR, all these places. Because... Just like that Miro dude, I was talking about him. His whole shtick is basically a caricature of black American culture. See, he gets around his white buddies and everything is, yo, motherfucker, suck my dick, nigga, 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 hell, fuck all that nigga. I mean, everything is like real over-the-top nigga shit with that Miro dude. You understand? Everything is real, every, extra exaggerated Ebonics. Yeah, motherfucker. And he's telling a bunch of old corny jokes and laughing at his own jokes. It's real corny. Yeah, motherfucker, suck my dick from the back, motherfucker. Yeah, nigga. Yeah, these niggas are crazy, yo. And they'll do all that. Yeah, his wife is white, by the way. Miro's wife is white. It's a minstrel show. No, I'm talking about Miro from Jesus and Miro. Yeah, he's talking all this shit about suck his dick from the back. What kind of moist shit is that? What kind of moist shit is that? It's super fucking corny. It's that white boy humor. White cats like that. Suck a dick, motherfucker. Motherfucker, yeah, nigga. Yeah, nigga. And I said this the other day. See, you notice these Dominicans and some of these other Latinos who identify with white supremacy? They come around when it's representing our culture. It's nigga fuck a shit, nigga suck a dick. It's all that gutter talk. When these Latins get around black culture, like Cardi B, or get around black people, they want to fight in public and shit. You want to throw shoes, you want to act a damn fool when you get around other black people. When J-Lo wants to hang out with Puffy, she wears the dress with her titties and ass and stomach, all that shit out. Feel me? All those same people, when it comes to Latin culture, they don't do that. 
when it comes to Latin culture, they represent Latin culture with the utmost respect. They don't do all that nigga shit around Latin events or Latin themed events. They don't do that. I want y'all to notice that. I want y'all to realize that. They're on their P's and Q's at the Latin Music Awards. They're on their P's and Q's at the Latin Parade. No, they're on their P's and Q's when it comes to their shit. They don't look Takashi 69. Look at him. He gets around black folks and it's just nigga fest, nigga fest. They don't bring that shit around Mexican culture, Puerto Rican culture, Dominican culture. They don't do that. Yeah, a lot of folks don't peep that. Watch how they act at their events. It ain't all niggerish and over the top and stupid. They ain't fighting nobody. They ain't gang banging at the Latin events. They're in tuxedos. They're dressed to the nine. Rosie Perez is another one. Yeah, I'm putting you out there. We propped up Rosie Perez. Rosie Perez has said a lot of questionable shit over the years. Rosie Perez got me looking side eye. She'll talk a little good shit. She she had all that fine body back in the day. But Rosie Perez, she's kind of funny style about some of the shit she talks about. She said something about how she felt uncomfortable being naked and do the right thing. I, I felt a certain way about her kind of throwing Spike under the bus. Like, oh, she felt uncomfortable with Spike making her get naked and do the right thing. Do you know Rosie's been naked in a whole bunch of different movies? Rosie's been naked showing them ad that ass in them titties in other movies. She didn't have all that energy for them. She was talking about how on the set of Do the Right Thing, she had her brother come up there, somebody come up there with a knife. To make sure Spike Lee wasn't going to do nothing funny style. What the fuck are you talking about? Did she marry a white dude? I don't like that. Now she's, try she's trying to get brownie points from her white husband. Saying sucker shit like that. You dig? Spike put you on. You were a soul train dancer. Spike put you on. Talking about her brother came up there with a knife to make sure Spike Lee wasn't going to try nothing. What the fuck is you talking about? A lot of black folks put these folks on. Black folks put J-Lo on. You dig? Man, she, she, she busted open in other movies. She wasn't, was she scared and do the right thing? I mean, was she, and, uh, and white men can't jump? Yeah, she was a white man, can't jump. She was busting it open. Was she scared? Did she bring a knife? Did the Puerto Ricans bring a knife up there then? Come on. See, they real, f I don't like that bullshit. I don't like that bullshit. Y'all get around black folks and all of a sudden you got to bring a knife and all this old, but you get around your, your culture, now you're on your, your P's and Q's. All of a sudden, when you go to the Latin Music Awards, you, you got on a tuxedo. You ain't doing all that. You get around black folks, so you go to the BET Awards. You're a motherfucker. Suck a dick, motherfucker. Hell yeah. Piru, Puerto Rican Piru, Dominican Crips. Motherfucker, suck a dick. Everybody suck a dick in here. But then you go to the, the Latin Music Awards. Now, now you got a Spanish accent. I like to give this a word. I like to give this a word to um, Gloria Estefan. So now you talking different at the, the Latin Music Awards. But when you, it's all about us, now you, you done showed up to the black shit with a thong on, your pussy hairs out. Yeah, motherfucker, everybody eat this pussy. Everybody can eat this pussy tonight. Yeah, boo. Then you go to the Latin Awards. I like to give this a word. I like to give this a, a lifetime achievement to Celia Cruz. I like to give it to um, Julio Iglesias. Now you talking with a fucking accent. Now you know how to act right. Now you didn't calm that energy down a little bit. Now the energy is calmed down. You get around black folks. Come on, bitch. I'll kill you with my shoe, bitch. Motherfucker, I'll kill you, black bitches. You roaches. You cockroach, black bitches. I'll kill all of you. Suck his dick. 
Then you go to the Latin Awards. I like to give this. I want to eat up Puente. I like to give it. All right. You dig? Now you got it. Now you know how to act. Now you done, you ain't in the whole hills. You ain't, you ain't, you ain't rocking a red bandana. You ain't gang banging. Now you got on a tuxedo. I like to get it. They work to color Satana. I like to give it the water. It's so, so special. Like, the, the culture is so great. I love it. I'm so proud to, to represent. And please, give me a break. You did? But yeah, Rosie has another one. You watch these folks. You watch these people, man. Yeah, I know Cardi B be on that shit. I do know Cardi B is on that. I, what, when is the next Latin Music Awards coming up? When is the next Latin Music Awards coming up? Oh, let me see if I can pull up something. Hold on. Hold on. Let me see if I can put, pull up something. When is did the Latin Music Awards happen this year already? Hold on, let me see. Latin music. Hold on, I'm, I'm gonna see if I can pull up something. Did it happen already? The Latin Music Awards. Let me see. Let me see from last year. I'm trying to see. Uh, I'm trying to see somebody give an award. Hold on, where they at? This shit, motherfuckers know how to act. But this, this J Lo at last year's Latin Music Awards. Huh? She ain't shaking that ass. That's J Lo. She got a symphony band. <laughs> you see the energy is different? Oh, J-Lo ain't shaking that ass now. Boy, she is not shaking that ass at the Latin Awards. She got on a full gown with a symphony. It ain't all that dancing and twerking, none of that. All of those quesos lados, all of those miras, got it lost. She ain't popping that ass at the Latin Music Awards. <laughs> Y'all go take a look at the Latin Music Awards and see how motherfuckers be acting. They be on their best behavior. You dig? They be on their best damn behavior. And, hold on. Uh, Oh, Enrique Iglesias, hold on, hold on. Look how cool they are when they get their awards. <laughs> I like to give it to my manager, my manager, my, my award. I like it. I like to give it to my manager. I mean, they, they are so on their P's and Q's at those award shows. Everything is, oh man, they act right. Man. 
Man, man, man. You dig? You say Fashion Week is not a black event, but there were other black people there. I want you to understand it's not a black event. Hell, the American Music Awards ain't a black event, but there are a lot of black people there. So it's a place that's populated around by a, a bunch of black artists. So they'll come in there because it's a, it's a place that's dominated by black artists. And they'll come in there with the bullshit. Fashion Week, there were a lot of black artists there. You did? So the thing is, it's up to us. See, this is why we got to stay on code, be on our P's and Q's so all these other groups don't come in with their fuckery. Because right now there's a wave of wokeness that we, we got going on. So we're, we're, we're pushing the coonery out as Native black people. We're pushing a lot of coonery out. But a lot of these other people are coming in with their fuckery. So we got to be very cool. We got we to gotta be on code. I remember back in the 90s when we were on code. When they would... Um, I remember, I think it was a Soul Train. It was one of them award shows where they announced Vanilla Ice and everybody in the audience booed. They were like, get this bullshit the fuck out of here. That's, that, everybody was on code. Everybody was on code. You did, well, people, there's an awakening there. Black people are waking up and more of us are getting on code. More of us are getting on code. And, you know, this is why when the movies are coming in, you know, we're doing these movies. You know, I saw something. And then let me let me play this. I want to show y'all something that I saw and I always talk about this. Hold on one second. Hold on one second. Let me show y'all something. This is um, Jada Pinkett. I got Mama Peanut right here. What's up, boys and bed? Did you eat chicken, Lexi? Not. You didn't? Lexi ordered um, some soul food. I, I just ate sides. I didn't eat the chicken. I ate some mac and cheese. I ate some rice and beans. Some hush puppies. Very good. What'd you eat? Some jambalaya. Some shrimp jambalaya? No, no, I had. You ate some shrimp. Let's say you ate some shrimp. You ate shrimp. No, I got the vegetarian. They got vegetarian. Vegetarian. Okay. All right. Peanut said she didn't eat the shrimp jambalaya. She said she. I had picked a... up some of the meat that was in there. Okay. I'm trying to find it. Okay, what are you wasting, Peanut? I'm just wasting water at my office. I want to play. I want to play a clip of Jada Pinkett on Red Table Talk. She had um, Jane Elliott on, and I like Jane Elliott. Jane Elliott does these um, um, anti-racism um, maneuvers. And um, let's wait, hold on. Let me see if I can find it. I want to find a clip of it. Come on, man. Okay, I can't, I can't find it right now. So Jane Elliott was on there. And somebody sent me this because Kanye West, you know, he was cooning out and just kind of babbling the other day. And he said something about, you know, um, Abraham Lincoln was black. And somebody said, well, does Kanye have a point? And then they played the clip of Jane Elliott on Red Table Talk with Jaden with, with Jada Jada Pinkett. The blue eye test. Yeah, she's good. I, and I like Jane Elliott. I like Jane. I like Jane Elliott. So Jada and those guys were on there talking to Jane Elliott and Jane Elliott said, hey, did you know that Abraham Lincoln was black? And were Jade, all of them were just so surprised. What? 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 I mean they were just Who was it? Jane Elliott. Um, um, her, her kids, her kids. Okay. and her mom too. And Jane Elliott was like, "Yeah, um, Abraham Lincoln was a Melungeon. A Melungeon they're mixed with with African and other people, but they're they're essentially black mixed." 
And Jada and those guys were just flabbergasted. What? Really? What? Now look, look, and I say this all the time. Y'all know we said this in Hidden Colors 1. We said this damn near a decade ago. Y'all know we said that damn near a decade ago. And I love Jada, but Jada was bucking them eyes a little bit. She <laughs> probably obviously didn't Probably, really? Okay. Everybody doesn't see them, though. It's just not. Most of them. Yeah. They're not old like that. Okay. Yeah. I mean, we, we said that damn near a decade ago. We broke that down a decade ago. That's, that's the only thing I don't like. I don't like when a white person says the same exact thing we say. If we say it, hey, man, go look at Hidden Colors. Niggas and, and buck dancing coons and bedwinches and, like, man, oh, that's, that's, that's some hotep shit right there. That's some hotep shit. What is this hotep shit? It's always questionable when we bring it. When we tell you Abraham Lincoln was a Melungeon and they, his opponents were portraying him as black, man, get that whole tep ass shit out of here, man. I'm going to have to see some evidence. What, but how come you ain't put no, no references in the movie, man? Shit. You ain't put no references in there? How come you ain't do all this? Niggas got a million questions. If it's a black person saying it. Jane Elliott says the same shit. What? For reals? Lord Jesus? Is you? Are you serious? Are you serious? <laughs> oh my God. I'm like, I want to find the clip, man. I want to find the clip. I mean, we, we say something like, hey, man, there were a bunch of African people like the, called the Moors who went into Europe in the year 7-Eleven, and they conquered the area. Man, get that bullshit out of here, dog. The hell you saying, man? That don't sound right. I'm going to need some references, man. You got any references on that? That don't sound right. A white person says the same thing. Well, you know, yeah, there, was, there were some Africans called the Moors who went into um, Spain, and they were black Africans. I am Wait a minute. Some, uh, white man, are you saying some black people went in, to Africa? Man, are you serious? 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 <laughs> they start singing. Is he serious? <laughs> oh yeah, tomorrow is Columbus Day. Slash Indigenous People Day. Hilarious. Man. I want to find that clip of Jada. I want to find that clip, man. Oh. Little um, museum that you see today. Yeah. We saw some Native American artifacts and some Native American that were living down there. Yeah. And me and Jada looking at a picture when she was like, "Oh, look at she look like she was black." She was like, "She looks like Andromeda." Hilarious. <laughs> we couldn't take a picture though. They oh, don't they know were, how to take no pictures. Oh, no, see, that's funny. I, I would have snuck a picture if I was in there. No, they were. It was, they were it was, real it was, funny. Yeah, it, was, it was the size of this room. It was real small. Yeah, okay. they were right there. Okay. Oh man, I want to find that that clip of Jada. Oh man, where is that shit, yo? Okay, I can't find it right now. I would love to find that clip, but I can't find it. They look um um living in the Um, I can't find that clip, guys. I wanted to find it, but I cannot find it. Oh man. Yeah, but I wanted to show y'all that clip. Tell Peanut to get on camera. No, let her sit her ass over there. Get my little <laughs> Put your hair down. Yeah. You dig? Man, now I want to find that clip of Jada. I want to find that clip, but I cannot find it. Damn, man. But um It's on Jada. Oh, it's on her Instagram. Oh, let me let me do that. Okay. Thank you guys. Let me let me do that. Let me look up for Graham. Let me just do it like that. Hold on. So 
right, let me put it. This is her gram. Okay, yeah, this is it. Yeah, thank you. Somebody help me out just like that. I got it. Here it is. This is this is Jay. Neither of us are scholars. Lincoln's. I mean, well, yeah, that's to, a, to, a, to make sure again? that slavery couldn't. So Lincoln, be that is like again. conspiracy. Some people think that he might have been black. Who was our first black president? Well, Barack. Get off the chair. Who's our first black president? Who's our George, first black Washington. George Washington. Abraham Lincoln. Abraham Lincoln. Oh, oh. Abraham Lincoln was a Melungeon. Wow. He was part what? black, part white, and part Cherokee Indian. Wow. Yeah, you didn't know that. Did you? He was a superhuman human being because I don't know he was how to a Melungeon. M e l u n g e o n. M e l. Oh, there it is. There it is. What okay. does it say? It says Melungeon ancestry of Abraham Lincoln. Uh, what? Really learning. <laughs> <laughs> Strange things happen. <laughs> Jane, you're yes. so gangster. Neither of us are stars. Right. My eyes were bucking just a little bit. <laughs> All right, but I give it to her. I, I give it to her. She, she may not have known, but shit. A lot of folks act like that when somebody white tells you some shit we've been telling you for the longest. Oh, my God. <laughs> I love Jada, too. I love Jada the life. But man, when when black folks say the same thing, boy, black folks out of oh, let me I'm, let me research that now. I don't know now. Let me see that now. Let me research that now. You did man. <laughs> so and there's no shade to her at all. No shade to her at all. Um, shout out to um, the Republic of Central Africa. Do you know in, in the Republic of Central Africa, I forgot the name of the exact city, but there's a, a, a mining company, Chinese mining company out there. One of the young workers was with some of these Chinese employees and they want a boat or something. And they said the boat capsized and the black dude came up missing. Nobody knows where he is. And he was with these Chinese cats out there in Africa. So let me say the brother's name. I like to put respect on people's names. And I really want to start creating that bridge where we show respect to the brothers and sisters in Africa. Now, I get on a lot of coons who are allowed over here, but we got a lot of riders over there who are not coons. Let me be very clear. It's just that the coons are allowed over here faster. The coons are allowed over here faster. Hold on. Let me put the brother's name out there. The brother who got killed. Well, not I won't say he killed, but he's he's missing. I won't say killed, but he's missing. The brother's missing. Hold on. Let me... Come on, Story. Come on, where you at, Story? All right. This is in Bangu. Bangui. Bangui. Um, it was a brother. My brother is Lucy's brother. Okay, what's the guy's name? The Dembele Nico. I'm mining in some city has for a company. The boat tip. Okay, the youth leader's brother. Describe Chinese employees. Okay. Where's the guy's? Uh, what's his name? I'm trying to find the guy's name. Hold on. Y'all bear with me. Bear with me. Let me find his brother's name. I'm, I'm going to speak his name. I'm going to speak this brother's name. Ah, fuck his brother's name. What is his brother's name? This was in Bangu or Bangwai, um, um, Africa. Hold on. I'm, I'm gonna say this brother's name. I'm gonna find it. Hold on. It's gonna take me a little, a few seconds, but I'm gonna find it. And also, those Malema shirts are coming too, guys. Those Malema shirts are coming next week. 
All right? Those Malema shirts are coming next week. AP News. Okay, I'm looking at the AP News. Okay. So, they keep referring to him as a youth. His brother, the disappearance of a youth leader. They're not saying his name. They're saying his brother's name. His brother's name is Mathurin Dembele, Dembele Nico. That's his brother's name. So then I don't think they're releasing the brother's name. All right. I wanted to speak our brother's name because he's missing. And they said he was a youth leader out there in um, the Republic, Central African Republic. Okay. Bengu, Bengai. Well, what is it? Bengu. Okay. So this brother was with these Chinese workers and the brother ended up missing. All right. They don't know what happened to this brother. On the boat. On the boat. They were on a boat going somewhere, and they said the boat capsized, and they can't find the black dude. So the people in the area, they killed three Chinese nationalists in the area. The crowd of people rose up on them and killed three Chinese people. They killed their ass. The ones that were with them or some other I don't know if they were with them or not, but they caught three other ones slipping. They said, look, because I, uh, evidently the dude was a youth leader. So he must have been somebody who was very respected in that area. So he was with these Chinese cats. They came back without him. They were like, okay, well, you, your people are going to go home without you. And some other people ain't going home either, and that's going to be you. And them brothers in Africa rose up on him and killed him. They killed three of them. You got one of us, we're going to get three of you. So now people are feeling a certain way about it. You did? Because I've been seeing videos of Chinese cats over there kind of raising up on folks. Also over in China, remember, they killed a brother in China. There's a, a, a brother, where was the brother from? I want to say he was in Bobway in. He was a student over there, or he might have been an exchange student, but he was a brother living in China. They found out he was dating a Chinese woman. A bunch of Chinese men beat him with poles and killed him. So, shit, you know, that's what happens. What the yeah, what happened? Was that? Shit, that's what happened. He was from Zambia. Okay, that's what happens. You kill people, you fuck around and get killed back. You killed certain people from a certain group, and when your group gets killed, too, they're treating your group like you treat theirs. Gaza Mese, he was Zambian. Zambian, okay. He was from Nigeria or Zambia? I'm hearing Zambia. We're in the room heavy tonight. We're in here heavy. Boy, y'all y'all play with that spirit of Ogun if you want to. The spirit of Ogun is real. So, yeah, and um, they killed three of those Chinese dudes, and I think they injured a fourth one. So, you know, so they're going to think twice about, you know, doing stuff to folks over there. That's what happens. The Chinese took over an airport in Zambia. Yeah, yeah, man, they, they, they dominate that area over there. Black folks got to be very careful. You got to be very, very careful when you get one imperialist power to help you with another one. You got to be careful that they don't take you over. You did? The brother from Zambia, Mawale. His name is Mawale. Yeah, everybody in the chat room is like, damn, there are 5,000 people in here. Everybody right now, hit the like button. I just noticed that. We got like 4,744 people. Everybody right now, hit the like button. Everybody in here, all the thousands of people in here, hit that like button right now. 
I just noticed that. Everybody hit the like button. So all you got to do is reach down and just push the button. Don't take you nothing. Just push. There you go. Everybody push the like button who's in here right now. Let us know we're in the building. Let us know we're in here. Let us, let us know you're filling the Melanoid Ministries. There you go. I see it rising up. There you go, family. Already punched it. That's what's up. But um, now let's let's get into some Cosby talk. Let's get into some Cosby talk. Because I was talking about Cosby earlier. I was talking about that earlier. Shout out. What's up, DJ Scrap Dirty? Um... The other day, I did a big thread on Cosby. I did a, a long 21-post thread on Cosby. All right? I did a 21-post thread on Cosby, breaking down the real reason why they were going after Cosby. And I brought heavy receipts. For those who did not see that, if you didn't see it, can you press 2, please? I know many of you saw the thread, but those who did not see the thread, can you please press two? Just so I'll know, and I'll catch some of you up to speed. I just wanted to know who all did not read the thread that I had on Cosby. You dig? Man. Where you at? Okay, a lot of y'all haven't, y'all didn't see that thread. Okay, I'm going to break some of it down. Okay, I'm going to break some of that down, fam. Let me break that down. Let me, let me pull up my receipts so I have my receipts ready. All right. Okay, so with Cosby, right now, a lot of folks pressing too, okay. Right now, y'all know he's Cosby's in jail and... You know, they, they're going to file an appeal. I think he has a strong appeal if he, you know, gets everything out of the hands of that judge who already, who clearly had a vendetta. This was a vendetta shakedown. Um, all the white supremacists got on code. They do have a strong appeal. There was a lot of stuff going on in this case that was real funny style. They, they bent the law in so many different ways. And we're going to break this thing down. Um, notice that everything started hitting the fan with Cosby 2014. I'm jumping ahead, then I'm going to jump back. Notice everything jumped off in 2014. In October 2014, that's when Hannibal Burris did his comedy routine, and then the white media jumped on that and was like, oh God, it's a black guy talking about Bill Cosby as a rapist. Let's run with this. Because the black guy said it. They pretended that it was all about Hannibal Burris. They pretended that they were on it because Hannibal Burris mentioned it. So they used Hannibal Burris to hide behind. Got it? They used Hannibal Burris. And I posted documented proof that earlier that year in February, they were already plotting to get this scandal going. They were cooking this scandal with those women in February 2014, not in October. Hannibal Burris, that was in October. So they were cooking that shit earlier that year. They were already planning it. I posted receipts. It was a few articles here and there, but people were questioning these articles because, remember... Woody Allen, in February 2014, remember his kids was coming out talking about how he's a damn molester and he sexually abused them. So they used Cosby to get all the heat off Woody Allen. Remember, Woody Allen's kids was talking about how he's a fucking pervert, his own kids. So some of these little media outlets were like, well, what about Cosby? He has some charges and some, some accusations on him. It was nothing but a deflection for Cosby a deflection to get off Woody Allen. And also, in 2014, there was a movie being made that I always talk about called An Open Secret that was going to expose all the pedophilia and sexual abuse in Hollywood. I always mention that movie, An Open Secret. They were making that in 2014. It came out in November. So they were already getting ready to use Cosby as a deflection away from all those other white cats who were about to be exposed. Got it? So remember... The movie Open Secret, it was 
technically released in November 2014, right before that movie was released, then they had that whole Hannibal Burris bullshit in October. So they, they planned this. That, that was one of the reasons. There were several reasons. Another thing is, around 2014 and before, in Massachusetts, Cosby's on his property. He has a real big property out there in, in, a, in a rural part of Massachusetts. And there is a, a gas company, one of the largest gas companies in the country, Kinder Morgan. They wanted to use Cosby's property to get access to gas. They wanted to build, put a pipeline on Cosby's property out there in that area to get access to gas and oil. There's a lot of gas and oil out there. So we're talking about Kinder Morgan. We're talking about billions of dollars now. And this is all documented. This is, I got all the receipts. So you got the Cosby family saying, hey, no, we don't want, no, no, no. We don't want you mining or doing anything. We don't want that around here. Don't come around our house surveying. The Cosby, they would put signs on their property, like don't be surveying our property out here. We're not interested. You understand? Thank you, Nicole's view. So they said the pipeline was at least worth $340 million for starters. That's for starters. You know that this shit is worth billions of dollars. Y'all know there's all types of oil and shit up there in that area? Yeah, the, the Neverland Ranch had oil too from what I heard. But yeah, there's oil and all that shit up there. And they were trying to run a gas line on Bill Cosby property. This is documented, family. I, we got the receipts. Yeah, Kinder Morgan, that's the largest pipeline owner in the U.S. They're huge. So we're talking billions of dollars that's being held up by these uppity Negroes. Come on. And in 2014, I put up receipts of Camille Cosby writing op-ed um, um, letters in the local newspaper speaking against the pipeline company. All of this is in 2014 now. Miss Cosby, we, we put up articles of her speaking out against this. And Bill and his wife, they would be in the community speaking out. They would get the whole community to speak out against that. So they had to really discredit him. That's one of the reasons they had to get Cosby up out of the paint. He's fucking with billions of dollars of that oil and gas money. Y'all better look that up. You dig? Because you got these Negroes out here, man. Cosby, he had erected them women. He's a sexual. You got Negroes talking that dumb shit. Man, you better understand. These white supremacists will get on code and lie and throw up a smoke screen so they can be doing something else. And also, with the Cosby thing, the Cosby thing was really about embezzlement. It was about um, in, embezzling money. This was about scamming. This was about extortion. They've been trying to extort Cosby. Some of these same people connected with this current trial. They've been trying to extort Cosby since the mid-90s. Do y'all understand that? I brought the receipts. Heavy. There was no evidence against Cosby, and they keep telling the lie that he confessed, and in the documents, he clearly didn't confess. They asked him specifically if he gave people drugs unknowingly. He said, no, that's not a confession, and they know it. They put this man in jail with zero evidence whatsoever, and then another man accused of the same shit. They put him on the Supreme Court. But let's break it down. Let's go back deeper. They've been coming for Cosby heavy. They've been trying to embezzle and... Um, um, extort this man for years. This is what y'all need, really need to look at, and I want y'all to, to look this up while I'm talking. In 1997, when Bill Cosby's son, Ennis Cosby, got killed, and I'm going to talk slow because I want y'all to pull your Google up and look this up while I'm talking. And I want y'all to ask me, is this a damn coincidence? Or answer if it's a coincidence. 2007, in January 2007, I think January 16th, 
Watch these dates. Cosby's son, Ennis, got killed on the side of the 405 freeway out here in Los Angeles. He said he had a flat tire. He pulled over to change his tire. He was killed by a Russian connected hitman. They tried to make it sound like a random carjacking. The guy who killed him is named Markasev, Mikhail Markasev. I hope I'm pronouncing his name right. Mikhail Markasev. All right? Mikhail Markasev had ties to the Russian mafia. Google that right quick, just so y'all don't, I'm just, so y'all don't think I got a tinfoil hat on. Google this. As a matter of fact, the media had to stop saying that this guy had connections to the Russian mafia. A lot of Russians came out around that time and said, them, told the media, y'all need to chill out on that Russian mafia shit because the Russian mafia don't exist, wink, wink. It was that type of thing. They were literally saying the Russian mafia don't exist, so stop saying that we exist. Crazy shit. So this guy, who they said this was a carjacking, and also with this Mikhail Mc, um, M Markasev guy, there were two other people with him who didn't get charged, by the way. They don't tell you about the two other people. So there were accessories to it. So they said that Markasev was on some kind of phone in the area, and he told his friends, hey, I'm about to go jack somebody. So he's supposed to have walked down to the 405 freeway to go jack somebody on the freeway on foot. How do you jack somebody on foot on the freeway? How do you jack somebody on foot in a freeway? The only, reason, the only way you can carjack somebody on a freeway is if you have three cars with you and you box somebody in and run them off the road. That's the only way to carjack a person going 65 miles per hour. You understand? So this motherfucker walked down there on foot to carjack somebody on the freeway. So this is this is the official story of what they're saying. So it, he ended up killing Ennis Cosby on January 16th. He killed him and then left. He didn't take the car. Ennis Cosby had a Rolex watch on, didn't take the watch. Ennis Cosby had a wallet full of, full of money. Didn't take the money. Then there was some mysterious white woman in a fur coat and some heels out there that supposedly knew Ennis because Ennis called her to come through because he needed her headlights, this white woman. He called this mysterious white woman to come through because he needed her headlights because it was dark. So the white woman showed up, and the report says that the killer tapped on the white woman's window, said, hey, roll your window down, I'm going to kill you. And she said she drove off. Uh, this is the official story. I'm telling you this is the official story. It don't make no damn sense. That's the official story. This white woman showed up that Ennis knew and then this killer showed up, told her he was going to kill her. She drove off. Then he killed Ennis. Stephanie Crane, that's her name. You understand? That Don't that sound like a damn setup? That's the official story, family. So how you carjack somebody, you don't take the car? You carjack somebody, you don't take a brand new Mercedes? And from what I understand, that kind of car, you push a button and then the, the, the tire inflates itself, from what I understand. So that was a hit. And understand, this Marcus Eve guy, he was a Russian white supremacist. This dude was a straight-up white supremacist. He went around bragging, talking about, hey, I killed that nigga. He was a straight-up white supremacist. And people were tying him in with the Russian mafia. This is another thing they don't tell you. Look this up while I'm talking. Do y'all remember Autumn Jackson? 
Do you guys remember Autumn Jackson? Autumn Jackson, that was the woman who said that Bill Cosby was her dad. Remember her? And her mom had an affair with Bill. He admitted to having an affair with her, the mom. And Autumn Jackson was going around talking about she's Bill Cosby's dad. And there was a big extortion plot. And she ended up going to jail. Remember that? Autumn Jackson had two other co-defendants with her that the media never talks about. There were two other co-defendants with her that the media never talks about. And it was her co-defendants, they were the ones orchestrating this shit with her. You dig? It was a guy named Jose Medina. He's supposed to be a Spanish dude. And another dude named Boris Sabaz. But his real name was Boris... Hold on. Let me give y'all his real name. I'm, I'm giving y'all heavy receipts tonight. I want y'all to look this up. Remember this name. Boris Slumlevich. Those were her co-defendants. These were the people orchestrating the extortion. And the Jose, Jose or Yossi Medina, because they say he's Spanish, but he might have been a, a, um, a Ukrainian dude too. Yossi Medina, he was supposed to be some kind of TV producer. Okay? So Autumn Jackson had these two co-conspirators with her that the media never talks about. And they got convicted too, by the way. Look this up. The same day Ennis Cosby got killed by this dude, Amber and these two other guys, one of them is Russian. Boris, Boris Sabaz, or Boris, a.k.a. Boris Shlomlevich, he's Russian. That's why I wanted to say what those names were. He's Russian. Boris is a Russian name. He's Russian. Boris is Russian. Amber Jackson was in cahoots with some Russian underworld dudes. So the same day Ennis gets killed by a Russian hitman, some other Russians send a fax to Bill Cosby's office demanding $40 million with Amber Jackson, with uh, Autumn Jackson. You dig? The same day, look at the receipts. Remember, Ennis Cosby was killed on the 16th. Autumn Jackson was arrested on the 18th of um, January 2014. She was arrested two days after Ennis got killed, along with these Russians. They don't put, they don't never put that shit together. They don't never put it together. They know this. They've been keeping that quiet for years. Yeah, that Boris dude was a Russian business owner, an underworld dude. So this was a whole big Russian connection, dude. And Amber, Autumn, I keep saying Amber, Autumn. Remember, Autumn went to jail. That was an orchestrated hit. And understand, they stopped talking about the Russian connection in the media because understand, those Russians are real clicked in in Hollywood. Them Russians are clicked the fuck in. You think they clicked in? They're clicked into our politics now. They, it's been like that. All this Russian interference, they've been clicked into Hollywood and all this stuff back then. Now it's coming out. We see that they're all clicked in in our politics and everything. It's been like that. So somebody was like, hey, y'all better stop saying our name. Somebody started hitting up Hollywood like, hey, don't, don't you say no Russian mafia now. You dig? Ennis was killed in 97. Exactly. He was killed in 97. Look at those dates. He was killed January 16th, 97. Now let's go even deeper. Let's go deeper with this. So now, one of the women trying to embezzle money and extort money from Cosby Amber, I keep saying Amber, damn it. Autumn, let me write the name down so I won't forget. I keep saying Amber. Autumn Jackson went to jail for trying to extort Cosby. 
Autumn's mother is a lady named Sean Brown. She goes by different aliases. Sean, let me give y'all some of her aliases. Let me give you some of her aliases. Sean Brown, She, it, it, her name, because I think she got married, and her name would kind of change it, but it's Sean Brown. That's, I, I want to say her maiden name, but her mother's Sean Brown. Sean Brown is one of the 60 women who accuse Cosby now that they're parading around that helped get Cosby put in jail now. Look that up. Amber Jackson, Autumn Jackson's mother is one of these Cosby accusers now. She's one of these women running around here talking about Cosby drugged her and raped her. Look that up right now. And if I'm lying about anything, I just said somebody call the lie out right now. You find the lie and you tell me any lie I just said. If I'm got if I got a tinfoil hat, prove any goddamn thing I just said wrong. Sean Thompson Upshaw. That's that's Am Autumn Jackson's mother. Sean Thompson Upshaw. That's Autumn Jackson's mother. The media never mentions this. So one of these women out here trying to embezzle money and extort money with this whole fraudulent ass case, her daughter already went to prison for trying to extort Cosby. And the media never tells you that. And y'all dumb niggas want to sit up here with hey, He's a serial rapist, though. He, if all them women is saying he did it, it must be true. Buck in your fucking eyes and don't know how deep this shit is and how slick these white supremacists are when it comes to finessing niggas. You believe everything these people are telling you and they're leaving out major parts of the goddamn story. This woman's out here, her daughter went to prison for embezzling and trying to extort Cosby. Now this woman is out here helping getting Cosby in jail and they don't tell you that. This woman has been in the meeting. She wasn't talking about rape then. She didn't mention anything about no rape or no drugs back then. Now that they told them to say that, now she's talking about she'd have been raped and drugged and that's how she had the baby. This is why we don't ever believe anything these people tell you. Everything I'm saying, you guys can look at it and you can see the receipts. Black folks sitting up here talking about he a theory of rapist, though. He a theory of rapist. And this is a big old money-making scheme, man. Fuck out of here, Kaya David. Come on, well, he's still a perv. Well, shit, you a perv. Fuck out of here. Miss me, we ain't skipping over all these scandals and embezzlements and extortions. Well, he's still a perv. No, no, we're going to address these extortions and we're going to address how slick these people are. So, see, y'all want to skip over the white supremacist shit. And also, what's interesting with um, Andrea Constant. She got she got a lawyer before she did her thing with the the accusations of her being drugged and all that. She got a lawyer and the, the lawyer had to coach her. And I saw some of the the depositions of something And Andrea Constant. She was concerned about, you know, getting caught up in an embezzlement case or, or an extortion case like like Autumn Jackson. My sister Kia Soto brought me a great receipt on that. I want to find that receipt. My sister, Kia Soto, who's real thorough with this trial, she brought a great receipt on that. Let me see if I can find that. Because there was something very specific that um, in one of the, the depositions that she had, a, had the documents showing that um, um, Andrea Constant, she didn't... Where's that? Andrea Constant, she didn't want to get into a situation where she could go to jail for extortion so they had to word everything right because they saw what happened with 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 autumn so they didn't want the same thing to happen so they had to get a lawyer they, they, they had to do it that way they couldn't come at cosby directly they had to go through a lawyer and then come up with this whole we all got drugged a uh, hundred years ago bullshit 
Where's that receipt? Where is that receipt? My sister sent me that. I would love to find that because I, I like to have the receipts right and exact. I don't think I can find it now because my sister gave me so many. But yeah, that was the thing. They were... Ah, where is it? Where is it? Where is it? Well, I think this is it. What is it? Autumn. Let me do DNHS. Autumn. Oh, yeah, yeah. That's another thing. That Autumn, she didn't want to do the DNA test. Okay, there we go. There we go. Okay, this is it. So you see court documents from Constance attorney explaining why her client obtained an attorney before getting to the police. Okay, so there's a document showing that um, they were talking to Andrea Constant, the lawyers, and they said, so the concern at the time that you were initially retained was whether your client would be convicted for extortion the way Autumn Jackson was. And this is Constance Cl attorney saying, yeah, right, I was concerned about that. So when you're representing her to ensure that she wouldn't be convicted for extortion, you were representing her in the event that a civil case came up. Isn't that correct? So this was a plot for a long... They, they were plotting. When Andrea Constant came through, the lawyers, they were trying to work it out so that Andrea Constant couldn't... They couldn't double back and sue her for extortion or lock her up for extortion, which is what this was. This was an extortion case. Even, understand, in November of 2014... From what I understand, and remember, Gloria Allred was representing a whole bunch of these clients. So the thing was, and Gloria Allred kept coming out saying, look, Cosby, if you give us $100 million, we'll go away. Give us $100 million and we'll bounce. So this was an extortion plot. They just used lawyers and the media to help them this time. You understand? So this was heavy. This was some heavy stuff. So you got to understand the receipts. And this is all extortion. It's all extortion. So you put all that together. You put in decades long extortion attempts. Also, the Cosby's are standing in front of billions of dollars being made with this gas company. All of that in the mix. They were like, we got to get this nigga out. And also... All these other white cats are being exposed for sexual perversion in Hollywood. So they're like, well, look, we need to throw Cosby out there. Let's just, we need to go ahead and get him on out there. It's going to benefit us. It's going to benefit the gas company. It's going to benefit all of us executives and all of us people in Hollywood. And everybody can make money at the same time. We're going to make a, a boatload of money off this. Let's get him up the fuck up out of here. Man. So it's real heavy. But that's why it's important for black folks to be on code. My problem is all the Negroes sitting up here trying to co-sign it so that you can get you some butter biscuits. Man, Bill Cosby, he is, he is inferior rapist. He is crazy. That's, that's just you trying to get a butter biscuit. You ain't helping them white women. This is for white women. White women and white men are capitalizing off Bill Cosby's situation. You ain't getting shit. Negroes, you ain't getting nothing out of it. The fuck you celebrating for? You celebrating because somebody finessed a black dude? What you celebrating? All these white feminist groups about to get money where they're getting money poured into their systems and their little nonprofits. You got these women and these lawyers. They're getting caked off. The prisons, they're getting caked off because now they got a, a famous celebrity in prison. You got these judges and all these people about to get book deals. All these white people about to cake up. What you Negroes celebrating for? What, what yeah, he, he both to go to jail. What you jumping up and having a, 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 a crip walking session for? You all celebrating and what you getting? How is him going to jail going to help you? Well, if none of the women were black, they don't give a shit about them black women. Them black women, they about to get a dime. Or the, the women you think are black. They got black after the trial. None of them women really identify with black before this Cosby case. All of a sudden, they show up with afros and dark makeup on. This was a farce. And I hope that appeal goes through so he can get on up out of there. You dig? 
I'm not with no white supremacist lynch mob. That's what that is. And then everybody else gets a pass. They got the same accusations. Everybody else get the pass, and then they get um, nominated for the damn Supreme Court. No, we're going to... One person go, everybody should go. It shouldn't be based on race. You then, no, say who they coming at Steve Harvey? No, what they look like they're trying to do, come at Kobe Bryant next. They look like Kobe Bryant might might be their next target. I saw an article that was eerily like one of those Cosby articles. What they'll do, they'll start planting little articles months in advance, and they did an article with with what's that? Some baby possum. It's a possum out there? A baby. A baby one? Yeah. God damn, it's in the front. It's coming to your door. Hold on. Well, there's a baby possum. I don't see it. It's, we got all That's types disgusting. of... disgusting. Man. But, um, <laughs> yeah, Russell got the hell on. I don't blame him. Russell got the fuck on up out of here. Ain't Russell in Malaysia somewhere? But uh, they, they've been planting seeds. You know, they planted a seed for Morgan Freeman. They just planted a seed. Yeah. I don't see it, sweetie. Well, I see it now. Yeah, that's the little... Damn. A, I never seen that. Is that a raccoon or a possum? Possum. There's a little baby possum walking in front of our door right now. Close. You did? Man. Yeah, look at it. It might be a, an FBI possum. It might have a little... Backpack on him with a camera. <laughs> Don't scare it off, Peanuts. He's going to play dead and just lay there. Because we got like all types of wildlife in our yard. And there was a big ass possum in the backyard. And you know, possums play dead. So I walked up on this motherfucker. That nigga saw me and was like, I'm like, get your ass up, possum. Yeah, they ain't going to bite you. They got teeth, though. Yeah. yeah, the mama ain't far behind. Yeah, so it might be a whole posse of possums. But like I said, they were planning a story about about um, Kobe Bryant talking about he's a, how come he's not a pariah? He raped a white woman, and oh man, they went in on Kobe just out the blue. So you know, you you watch that these white supremacists that they know what they're doing. They're all on code. So they put a little story out. So when it's time to circle back on them, they'll already have the seeds planted. You dig? Yeah, they, they plant the seeds on you. These white supremacists, they plant the seeds on me. They got so many negative articles about me out. But usually it's a lot of these right-wing white supremacist publications that put these negative articles out about me. It's because I called out white supremacy. That's the reason why. Man. Yeah, Kobe better chill. Kobe better watch his back. You better go out there with Russell Simmons and chill. Yeah, Russell got the hell on. Where, where is Russell? I heard he was in Malaysia or Thailand. Where did, where did he go? Well, we in here heavy. Everybody, we got 5,000 people in here. Everybody hit that like button. If you haven't hit the like button, hit the like button below, family. We're in here. Who's all going to the Mink Slide concert December 22nd? If you're going to the Mink Slide concert in Atlanta, December 22nd, hit the... Um, no, no, hit button. Press 1. If you're going to the Mink Slide concert in Atlanta, press 1. Get your tickets at minkslide.com. Everybody going to the Mink Slide concert. We're going to rock out. We are going to rock the hell out, man. We, we get enough. You put 1500 on HC5. Much respect to you, Keith. Much respect to you. Let me play that Mink Slide commercial one more time. Okay. Get ready, Atlanta and surrounding areas. For you to take my get ready, Atlanta and surrounding areas. Flex Entertainment proudly presents Mid Slide Live in Concert. Coming to the Center Stage Theater in Atlanta, Saturday, December 22nd, 2018, 7.30 p.m. Whenever I'm with you. Mid Slide 
is bringing the funk party to Atlanta. Performing songs from their critically acclaimed album, Egyptian Musk. Also performing special guest, the APX. Atlanta. Don't miss the fun party. Concert event of the year. Get your tickets to see Mink Slide. Live in concert. With special guest, the APX, at Ticketmaster.com. For more information, go to MinkSlide.com. Baby, you hear I'm back. I'm back, guys. What's up? <clears throat> yes. Man, y'all better come through. Y'all better come through to the Mink Slide concert. Get your tickets right now at minkslide.com. Whenever I'm with you, got that feeling. Yeah, that's the jam. It's got that feeling. What should be the next song we do a video for, though? I should do a survey. What should be the next song we should do a video for from the Mink Slide album? Man, what should be the next song? Come to Seattle. Satisfied, Wish for Love, True Loving, Pleasure and Passion, Pleasure and Passion. A lot of folks saying Pleasure and Passion. Um, satisfying, got that feeling. Well, they did a video for this. This nigga said, do one for its time. We got a video for its time. Fantastical, Pleasure and Passion. Pleasure and Passion. A lot of folks say Pleasure and Passion. Oh, my Desire. If I do Pleasure and Passion, should I have Peanut in it? I what? You say what? I'm asking. Shit. Maybe they want to, you know, uh, another model in there or something. Should I, should I do Pleasure and Passion and have Peanut in there? More peeps are saying satisfying. Really? Satisfying. My desire. A lot of folks are saying satisfying. Fantastical. A lot of folks like fantastical. So if I have peanut in it, what are we going to be doing? I got to see what we're going to do. It has to be fun. It's something fun we're doing. You just have Mama Peanut and have Coochie Berry in there. <laughs> Man. So I got to, I'm trying to see if it should, if, if it should, because City Lights is kind of a mid-tempo song. So I'm thinking, should we pace it up, pick it up? Mm -hmm. You know, something fast, something, you know, like wish for love. I don't know. I don't know. A lot of folks are saying satisfying. Yeah, because I look at, I look at, like Spotify, we can kind of monitor the popularity of the songs. And like on Spotify, like, City Lights is real popular. Pleasure and Passion is popular. Um, it's Time is popular. We already did a video for It's Time. Um, um, Wish for Love, that's popular. Got That Feeling is popular. So. They're all almost the same tempo, though. Everyone was different. It is really is Pleasure and Passion. It's more slow. Um, City Lights is slow. City Lights is a slower song. Um, no, I think that is actually slower. No, that's the slowest song on there. City Lights is more of a mid-tempo song. Everything is either fast, mid-tempo. They're all mid-tempo. The other one is fast. Pleasure, and, Pleasure and Passion is a slow song. That's basically. what I'm saying. That's a slow song. Yeah. yeah I need a ballad now. Fantastic. <clears throat> because the thing is, that the, the thing is, dance songs, they translate more internationally. When they're fast paced, I say put Claudia Jordan in it. Yeah. So a lot of um, fast songs translate internationally because they play them in clubs and they kind of put them in the mix easier. So if it were to be a fast song, it would be either Wish for Love or 
um, fantastical. And then, I think it's it. It's time with Ariana Grande. <laughs> and then we, I go to the Latin Music Awards <laughs> with a with a tuxedo on. <laughs> I like the Guinness that one. I like to thank Ariana Grande. It's time. I I want the award for it's time. I'll be up there with a, okay, a Latina accent. Awesome. I'll be up there talking like that. I'll be up. I'll be a, a coon for the Latin market. I like to thank Julio Iglesias, Aliana Grande, it's time, it is time. <laughs> like I'd be like Cuba Gooden Jr. Show me the money. That'll be my catchphrase. That'll be my show me the money. I have my Latin Music Award. <laughs> it's time, it is time. It's time to get together. <laughs> I like to thank the Latin Music Awards for giving me this award for its time. We must all stand up to immigration reform. It is time. <laughs> man, 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 man. Oh, Lord. What'd you say, um, Prime Street Player? You said, pleasure passing too slow. I ain't Luther. Well, nigga, your mom is Eddie LaVert with her big back ass. And we're going to go there, nigga. Your big husky mammy. Me and her going to do a duet, motherfucker. And we're going to call ourselves... Peaches and hoes, not peaches and her, peaches and hoes. Your big hoe mama with her big ass. Since you want to talk slick, you fuck nigga. Up in here, it's always a fuck nigga. Want to talk greasy. And what's this nigga's name again? St. Peter Player. Where you at, you fuck boy? We lost you in the mix, nigga. And that's the story of your life. Just a lost fuck nigga. No direction. Just running his goddamn mouth. That's the story of your life, my nigga. Since you want to come in here talking greasy with that weak fucking fade that you got in your profile picture. You did. Your mama don't do shit. Prime Street player. Nigga with that 1989 I'll be sure fade you got. You old fuck nigga. We're going to have you in the video being a background dancer, nigga. You're going to be our J-Lo. How about that, nigga? We're going to put you on a silk cap suit and some salt and pepper boots and some bamboo earrings, nigga. And you're going to push it, you fuck boy. That's what we're going to do for you. What, sweetie? Huh? I'm, not, I'm, all, I'm about to be done now. I just had to get on this little moist dick breath nigga right here real quick since he wanted to get up, since he wanted to get all up in my mix. Oh, yeah, I know. Ain't nothing good to watch now. Uh, I know. Man, my gout is acting a damn fool. Okay. Still a, a little bit. It's a little better. I'll be scared. Look, I'll be scared that, you know, when my gout flare up, because I, I, can't, I can't walk. I'm going to have to get some crutches, you know. <laughs> yeah, like when, my, when I get these flare-ups, I'm going to need some damn crutches. I'm going to order some shit off Amazon. I'm going to get that and some black seed oil. I'm going to just get crutches because I, I can't be... <laughs> Yeah, my dad. Yeah, my dad be rock. Cause my dad has gout too. My dad has a cane though. Mm -hmm. Yeah, has a cane. But I'm gonna get crutches. Fuck well, a cane. Have a cane yeah, yeah. I'm uh, I'm gonna get crutches. So when I get these gout flare ups, I'm just not just fucked up in the game. Yeah, I heard about Cat Williams getting arrested again. It's the the uric acid in my system. I, that's what I'm trying to do. I'm doing this detox, and usually when I do a detox, I'm getting rid of meat and all that. Um, I get these huge flare-ups and my man POV Hilarious D, y'all need to follow my brother too. Follow POV Hilarious D on, tw on, on, on YouTube here. He made a very good point saying that when your body is detoxing, you know, a lot of shit is getting out of your body. I guess some of the, the uric acid is getting caught up too because it's trying to get out of the body. So then it gets me fucked up in the game. So, drink cherry juice. Let me, 
Let me. I'm gonna write some of this stuff down because I do need to get back to staying that vegan life. I'm gonna stay in it for a few weeks because you know Thanksgiving coming up. I ain't about to play games with y'all ass. You dig? And plus, we about to go to Vegas too. I ain't about to be in no buffet in Vegas eating the damn avocado wrap. Fuck that. You didn't even like avocado. Oh. Uh, what else I need to get y'all? Because I, I got to remember what I need to get. All right. Cherry juice. Tart cherry juice, right? That's the one I need to get. I have some of that in my You got, you got cranberry, juice. cranberry juice. Right. right. I need. But that's the nasty one, though. I know, but I need to. Cherry juice. Cherry juice. I'm going to get cherry juice. I got aloe pure, though. I got that. You did? Yeah, I'm going to get that. No seafood. Yeah, I got to really watch that. You don't eat seafood. I don't. I, I eat fish every now and then. Tart cherries in a can. I'm going to get some cherry juice. Is there a particular, where my, my, my health people, is there a particular cherry juice I need to get? Tart cherry juice. All right, if I take some shit, y'all telling me and it fucks my gout off some more. To block y'all ass for life. And I'm never gonna send you a Hidden Colors DVD, ever. <laughs> That's gonna punish your ass. I'm gonna ban you from coming to Hidden Color screenings. I'm gonna have motherfuckers waiting on you. I'm gonna, have a, I'm gonna hire a white woman to stand at the door and call the police on your ass if you come to a Hidden Color screening. Y'all give me a wrong recipe and I get fucked up. I'm going to have a barbecue Becky. So, yeah, there's a nigga at the front door of Hidden Colors 5. Yes, this nigga's armed. I, I was told not to let him in. And you're going to be out there, is he serious? Is he serious? A teaspoon every day. Look at the Kagan water. I think that's what Sinbad was doing with his gout. What? Sinbad, he has gout. Kagan water. Okay, beet juice, essential alkaline water, tart cherry juice, Kagan water. Is that that's is that alkaline water? Kagan water. Somebody said quaaludes, nigga. They don't make quaaludes no more. All right. Kagan water is alkaline. Okay, I'm going to look into that. I'm going to look into that. I'm going to look into that. All right, y'all, let me get out of here, man. Boy, we went, we in here deep. We've been in here deep, man. Shout out to everybody tuned in. We had a very good conversation or great conversations. We talked about a lot of stuff on tonight's show. So, again, everybody, if you're in the southeast or anywhere in the country, come on down and watch us live at the Mink Slide concert in Atlanta, December 22nd. We're going to rock out. Tickets are very reasonable. Only 35 bucks to get in. Come on through. Have a good time. We're going to rock out. Great, great music. Me, the APX is opening for us. I want to see everybody down there in Atlanta in the place. Come on down from other cities. Um, this is going to be a huge event. You know, this is one of my first big concerts. We're going to rock out. We all, we're going to make a make a big splash. We're going to have a real good time. So we're going to have a very good time. And it's, it's good to come on out with your family, come on out with your lady, have a date night of it. You dig? Bring your, your, your people, girls, come on out with your home girls, dudes, come on out with your players, your frat, all that. Come on through. It's going to be a fun night. Y'all can mingle, kick it. Out in Atlanta, very fun night. Let your hair down. Have a great, great night right before the holidays in Atlanta. So you'll be off work. You dig? You're going to have a good time December 22nd. That's a Saturday in Atlanta. Make it a date night. Fellas, you meet a girl. Girl, you meet a guy. Come see Ming Slide in the APX in Atlanta. Then after the concert, y'all go down to... Um, one of the fine eatery spots, old lady gang out there in Atlanta. Have your late night meal, then hit the hotel up. 
get your smash on, and it's a, it, uh, the night will be complete. Have a nice romantic bang after the concert. Yeah, and, and that's not how it ends. It, it's going to end like that because y'all going to see me slide. Y'all going to be in the mood because I'm going to sing pleasure and passion. Oh, you got to put that in the mood? Uh, yeah, I'm going I'm to put y'all in the mood. <laughs> I'm going to put y'all asses in the mood. When I hit that pleasure and passion, we got a whole long version that we're going to do. So I'm going to get y'all asses in the mood with um, pleasure and passion. So y'all going to be ready. You dig? Old Lady Gang, that's my shit. I love Old Lady Gang out there in Atlanta. Love it. Check out the Ism Radio Travel Show. We, we featured Old Lady Gang and a whole bunch of different businesses in Atlanta. Type in um, Ism Radio Travel Show Atlanta, and we'll show y'all different eating spots in Atlanta. So all my Atlanta folks, if you not, not, even if you're not from, all, all my people in Atlanta, definitely get your tickets now. Even if you're not in Atlanta, if you're from different cities, start booking your flights and your hotels or drive and book your, get the Motel 6 ready, get the Super 8 hotels ready, the Hyatt, the Hilton. Get your rooms now so that y'all can drive over. Yes, I did. We got the whole band is complete. We're whooping ass in rehearsals right now. Oh, we getting, we're tight. The band is tight. We're rehearsing right now. We're getting it tight. We're going to make it fly. You dig? We're going to make it fly for you guys. You did? It's going to be hot, wet, and popping at the motel. Yes, it is. Yes, it is, man. Ladies, shave down there. Brothers, put put some baby powder on your balls. You did get, get ready for the ladies. Ladies, get ready for the dudes. So after the show, y'all be ready. You dig, ladies? Um... Spray between your cleavage, all that stuff. Get get ready. Get your hair appointments ready. Save some of your lace front money. You want to look your best. Save your lace front money. I want y'all to come up in there with the lace fronts gleaming because we might even air it. I'm thinking about doing um, a live broadcast of the show to like the UK and some of these other international markets because so many people are buzzing about the group. And this is such a big performance. So I'm thinking about even we're going to be filming it and we'll not just film it, stream it live in other countries so other countries can rock out because in that I got to do some radio drops for a radio station in Amsterdam. I'm thinking about streaming it for other countries because our shit is real huge in other countries like Amsterdam, the UK, and parts of Asia. Because they really get into that that old school funk vibe. You dig? Hi, what's your name? Hieronius Fox. Email me, brother. Let's let's chop it up. Hieronius Fox, my man over in DC. Email me, dead ass, and let's talk. Email me. Let's see what we can do. Why do you think we can't get an interview from Al Heyman to learn? Al Heyman is so low key. That's how you got it, man. Al Heyman, you know, he he's he just chooses to be behind the scenes. That's why he doesn't, you know, he tries to avoid being a target. He's one of those low key behind the scenes dudes, and that works for him. You dig? That really works for him. No, Al Heyman. Al Heyman. Al Heyman is a boss, man. Al Heyman is a boss. Oh, you saw that play with Snoop Dogg and Tamar Braxton? How was it? Man, I would love to sit in a room with Al Heyman and just soak up fucking game. I would love that's that's one of my that's 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 one of my wish list things. I would love to sit in a room with Al Heyman and just soak up game. See, the thing is, a lot of times black folks we get around certain people. We want, we want them to give us something. Man, he can give me some money for it. No. I want to soak up some game. I want to sit down with Al Heyman and just let him chop up game for like 45 minutes. I would soak up every bit of game that dude dropped. And use that game. 
that's how you learn, man. You get around some people. See, the thing, black folks, I really want us to get into the habit of this. Getting around people who are doing something and learning from them. Don't hate on them. We get around people and then jealousy and shit start kicking in. No. Get around these cats. If they're doing better than you, sit around them and soak that shit up. His time is expensive. Nigga, I'll just sit in the back and just listen to this nigga on the phone. That's all. I just want to see his daily get down. I'm looking at all that. That's what I, I just want to see how my man handles business. I'll soak that up. You understand? Al Hamm has been in the game for a long time. I would love to hear how my man gets down. You did Sometimes our people don't share, but the thing is, you bring around folks. No, we got to be fair about that. You say sometimes we don't share game. The thing is, man, you bring certain people around and you try to lace them with game, then they'll turn on you. All of a sudden, you try to bring somebody around and lace them and make them your apprentice, and all of a sudden, they done wrote a tell-all book trying to shit on you. See, we got that type of shit that we got to get out of our system. You bring certain people around, and all of a sudden, they don't love hip-hop. Telling all your business, trying to come up off you like that while shitting on you. We, we got to get that out of our system. That's a reality. Some people are foul, man. How did Al start as a promoter? I remember Al Heyman when I was a little kid. I remember Al Heyman's name back in the early 80s when he would promote these concerts like in um, down south all over the place. Budweiser, Superfest. Al Heyman's name has been buzzing since the 70s. I started hearing about him like in the, the like around 1980, 81. But he's been around since the 70s. I remember he would do a lot of promotions for Frankie Beverly and Mays. I would always I would always hear his name growing up. You did? So, you know, people like that, those are people that I would like to soak up game from, most definitely. Man. And you know what I'm going to, my man, you asked a very good question, Daisy. Um, do I mentor? And that's what I'm going to have to start doing, too. I got I to gotta do the same thing. I'm going to have to put together some mentoring programs. Because I do have a lot of people who, and I like Byron Allen. I like Byron Allen. I, I wanted to chop it up. I wanted to have Byron Allen on the show to drop some game. And his people declined. And I felt a certain way about that. I'm like, well, damn, I want you to just share with the people some game. Because Byron, I've seen him drop some real good stuff before and talk some real good game. But, you know, I don't know. I don't know. Yeah, Al Heyman promoted the big concerts back in the day. And, you know, I don't see promoters like him anymore. Do y'all know of any promoters like Al Heyman? Well, now the, the white court companies, they've kind of monopolized it. Like Live Nation... AEG, people like that. You dig? But understand, Al Heyman was shit, the biggest black promoter for a long time. And he was promoting like the Budweiser Superfest, these huge shows. And he would get all these black acts and just take them all over. And he, Al Heyman was the dude. But I think I'm, I might have to put together some type of mentoring program. You dig? So I have to look into that. I have to look into that. You know, that's why I like having people like George Frazier, Dr. Claude Anderson, and so many other people in the Hidden Colors movies because I learn from these people too. Yeah, I learn from these people too. Yeah, because that's the thing. I would show cats how to market your stuff, how to market products, how to market events, and doing it, and how to do that without the dominant society based on proof. I've marketed films that have outsold those in the dominant society. 
without their help. That's damn near unheard of. My group, we put out an album that debuted on the R&B charts in the top 12 without any help from the dominant society. That's something that we can show people how to do and show them the strategies that we used. We've I've had books, best-selling books. Some with the dominant society, I'll say that, some with, but even the ones that weren't with the dominant society, I still made those books successful as well. And I got the rights back to most of my books. Only books I don't have the rights to, um, Play Be Played and The Mac Within. One is Simon & Schuster, one is Penguin. But all my other books I got the rights back to. So I would, I would probably have to put something together like a mentoring program and just kind of lace cats with game and try to come up with something that we can do for those who are worthy of getting that game. Jermaine Dupree's dad, he's a major concert promoter. Okay. Is his dad with Live Nation now? or Because the Escape Tour, I want to say that went through Live Nation. You dig? And Drake gets its checks from Al Heyman. Yeah. Yeah, so Jermaine Dupree's dad, I wonder if he works, he must work with Live Nation. But anyway, let me get up out of here, man. It's been real. We've had a long night. Shit is damn at 10 o'clock, so. I've been on here live for a long time. All right, guys, it's been real. Go to minkslide.com to get your concert tickets to join me, Mink Slide, our group in Atlanta. I'm a holler.